Today we are going to make this stylized explosion smoke. We will go over the whole process of utilizing geometry nodes, shader nodes and also a modifiers to achieve this final effect. As always the effect is fully procedural, so virtually anything about it can be adjusted to your liking. Before we jump right into it, a huge shout out to Ulysses.eth who recreated my last tutorial and I think the result is just amazing. I mean by simply switching the color to blue and changing some other values he achieved this frosty winter look so I think this is an amazing result. Once again great job Ulysses and for everyone watching if you managed to make something out of this tutorial I would love to see that please share with me on my twitter link for that is in the description. And for those of you who don't want to spend time watching the tutorial and still want the effect the blender file is gonna be on my gumroad, link for that in the description as well. First of all we don't need anything else except for one vert, so we can start with creating a mesh, plane, then go into edit mode and click M on your keyboard and collapse. Then we can press E to extrude this vert couple of times, so we have this sort of path made of the vertices. Now we can exit the edit mode and drag in a new window, change it to geometry node editor and click new to create new geometry node tree. Now first we want to create curve out of this mesh that we have right now. So we will look for a mesh to curve, plug it like so. And right after that we need a resample curve. That is because we want evenly distributed points along our vertex path. So let's set it to something like 20. And right after that we want to convert this curve into mesh. And then the profile curve is gonna be a curve circle. You can lower the resolution to something like 16 and plug it into profile curve. This will give us this tube looking thing. And now because we are working with smoke, we are gonna add a set curve radius node. And this allows us to control the radius of our tube. So we can use it and add some variety to it. Let's drag a noodle out of this input and type in factor. Then you can select spline parameter factor. And you can immediately see that our smoke cloud is gonna be smaller at the bottom and bigger at the top. You can further adjust that by adding a color ramp and either invert the values so that the smoke is gonna be thicker at the bottom. Now what we want to do, we have a bunch of vertices in here and we want to turn that into a volume cloud. But in order to visualize it, let's create a distribute points on faces node, add it in here and change it from random to Poisson disk. The density controls how many points are there on the mesh, but as you can see, we still have this sleek tube looking shape. So in order to add some variety, we will need a set position node and plug it right between the curve to mesh and the distribute points on the faces and then let's drag this offset value and type in random this will create a node for you that will generate a random value between let's change it to minus one and one and depending on that it will offset the position of the vertices of this tube so the mesh looks quite like a mess but it doesn't really matter because we only care about distributing points on those surfaces. In order to control the amount of displacement, let's add a vector math node. Plug it right after the random value and change it from add to scale. So we have one convenient value to control the amount of displacement that we have. You can add another layer of you can add another layers of variation by dragging from this selection input, type in random again, and this is gonna make it so only some of the vertices of the mesh are gonna be displaced with our random value. So adjust it however you want. The next step is turning those points into a volume. For that we will need a points to volume node, and then right after that, a volume to mesh. And this should give us this sort of blobby looking mesh, which is exactly what we want. It's looking great already, but we could use a little bit more geometry. So let's add a subdivision surface node, plug it right after the volume to mesh and set it to maybe level two. Then all we need to do is set shade smooth and also set material that we want to use on our geometry. Now, right now we don't have any material right now. So let's click on our mesh, change the window to shader editor and click new to create new material. Now if you cannot find the nodes in here and you don't know where they are, you can simply click A to select everything and then comma on the numpad which is gonna zoom in to whatever selection you have. It's just sometimes when you're in the geometry node editor and you move somewhere and then go back to the shader editor then you may find yourself outside of your node tree. So again A and comma. We can delete the principled BSDF, we don't need that. And let's start with a geometry node. We can also go to the render preview. And if we preview the normal output from the geometry, you can see that nothing is happening. And that is because we just created this material, but we did not assign it in our geometry nodes. So let's do that right now, geometry node editor, 
and in the end of our graph in the set material node choose the material that we created and now everything should work perfectly so let's go back to our shader editor and now what we are interested in is the normal but only on the z-axis so in order to get that let's get a vector math node and change it from add to multiply and then multiply only the z-axis by one which is gonna isolate only the z-axis normals right after that we can copy this vector math and change it from multiply to distance we can leave this one as it is and as we preview it you can see that when we are looking from the top we can see these dark values and from the bottom everything is white we can further adjust that and refine it by adding a math node and change it to power then as you increase the exponent you can see that the mask is being more and more contrasty also make sure to check clamp to make sure that your mask does not exceed zero and one values let's move this out of the way and add a fernell node this gives us sort of a outline mask with a gray area in the middle so let's duplicate this math node change it to multiply and then plug fernell node and also this power node you should get something like this in the result then the next step is a mix rgb node and now we will actually start putting in some details onto our texture so let's plug this multiply to the color 2 and get a noise texture we can plug the factor to color 1 and change the mix rgb from mix to overlay and crank the factor all the way up now as you preview this you can see that this noise texture is being overlaid everywhere on the mesh so let's first of all increase the roughness all the way up and then increase the detail quite a bit maybe something like 7 and also add a little bit of distortion as well. We can then increase the scale to have a little bit more of that pattern appearing. And also with the node selected, click Ctrl T to get a mapping and texture coordinates node. This shortcut comes from the node wrangler add-on. So make sure that you have it enabled in order to use it. Now let's add a color ramp right after the mix RGB, then switch the values and bring the contrast all the way in something like this and now the last step is another color ramp and this time we're gonna lay in some colors that we want to have on our smoke cloud so because we are going for the stylized look i will change the interpolation from linear to constant and then we can start adjusting the colors so i will probably get rid of the blacks and change it to something grayish and then maybe get something in between that's gonna be maybe reddish and then the brightest value is gonna be and then the brightest value is gonna be yellow now as you can see that it's not working properly because we are seeing this yellow value from the top and not from the bottom so in order to flip it we can go back to the power and simply change the exponent from positive to negative value so if you had it at 5 then go to minus 5 but i will keep it something like minus 2 i found that this value works the best for me and we can further refine and adjust our masking by increasing the index of refraction of our fernell node so as we increase it you can see that the shadowy area is occupying more and more space i will leave it at 2 or maybe 2.1 but feel free to do whatever you want you can also make further adjustments in this black and white color ramp and then lastly with your colors and now the basic setup is done for a still image this already looks fine but then when we play the animation then nothing is happening so in order to add some visual fidelity with some animation let's select the mesh and go into the modifiers tab and add a displace modifier now click new to add a new texture and go into the textures tab First of all, let's change the type from image or movie to Voronoi and change the actual distance into distance squared. Then we have to go into colors, open the color ramp and then flip the values. Now let's increase the size to something like 1, but don't worry about it too much because we will control it with a separate controller. The only thing left to do here is change the contrast to something like 0.7. Now in our scene, let's create new empty plane axis and this is gonna be our distortion controller now let's go back to our mesh modifiers tab and change the coordinates from local to object and the object is the distortion controller that we just created now with the distortion controller selected let's go to the first frame of the animation and click i on the keyboard and choose location which is gonna create the keyframe with its current location then let's move the animation to let's say 20th frame move the empty a little bit higher and again i location then hover over the timeline and click t to change the interpolation to linear and also shift e and choose linear extrapolation which is going to allow you to have continuous movement of this empty even though we only set up two frames but you can see even past 20th frame it still moves up with the same speed so that is one way to add some dynamism to this scene if you want to control the size of your displacement texture just select the distortion controller and then as you scale the empty 
the displaced texture scales with it. Another way to add some interesting details into this animation is by animating this noise texture, and more precisely, the mapping node Z. So you can see as I move it, the noise moves upwards as well. So we can use that information and create a driver. Simply type in hashtag frame and then divide it by something like 10 and just make sure that before frame you put minus so that this value is going down which in turn makes the noise go up. Now you can see that the viewport is a little bit laggy and that is because we are dealing with lots of vertices so if that's uncomfortable for you to navigate you can go back into the geometry nodes and decrease the subdivision surface levels. It will decrease the details that you have on your smoke but at the same time it will allow you to work much more comfortably in the viewport. So you can just increase it right before you hit render. And there you go. Because we made it in a procedural way, everything at any step of the way is editable. So you can edit the vertex path that you created at the beginning and the smoke trail should follow. Similarly, the material can give you a lot of different results depending on what you're going for. Even by simply turning down the roughness and then switching the inputs for the mix RGB you can see that we have a totally different look of our textures. So feel free to experiment with that. And if you do, then make sure to share with me on Twitter. Link for that is in the description. And I can't wait to see your creative results. If you found this interesting, then maybe consider subscribing. That's it from me. Stay creative and see you in the next one.